What's up, Mustangs? Welcome to your seventh episode of The Main, the Media One Takeover. I'm your host, Matthew. And I'm your host, Anders. In today's episode, we'll be covering a new ice cream shop over at Fox Valley, the annual Orcasus Showcase, the bus driver shortage, and more. But first, here's some news about a downtown Naperville staple, Barnes & Noble. You've probably heard about how the Barnes & Noble in downtown Naperville has closed down after being there for two and a half decades. According to Janine Flanagan, Senior Director of Store Planning and Design for Barnes & Noble, it was simply that the landlord chose not to renew the lease. The store closed on Sunday the 21st and they will be relocating in Oswego. Because Barnes & Noble was a popular spot in downtown Naperville, we got interviews from your peers on how they felt about it. I go pretty, pretty often. Um, my little brothers like to read like um, Harry Potter books and stuff like that, but that's really where I find them the most. I'm gonna miss the Starbucks because there's a really cute waiting area that you can sit with your friends. I'm really upset. It's just a really peaceful place. I go with my girlfriend sometimes. Like, it was it was pretty fun to go because it's just such a calming and like relaxing place. But to see it closing is pretty sad. I am crushed about it. It's so sad. I can't go and get my Starbucks. I can't go and look at books that I won't ever read. Um, well, it's kind of sad to see it go because it's been there for so long. Whenever I was younger, I used to go there and I used to play there. Um, since it's like gonna go, I'm not really sure what's gonna replace it. That's kind of what like I'm interested about too. I'm really upset about it closing because we're losing a really valuable place to spend time with your friends and family. We also got an interview from an employee from Anderson's Bookstore, a local bookstore located in downtown Naperville. Um, I was working here at Anderson's Bookshop when they went in and we were obviously very concerned and you know made a lot of effort to make this the place to come to but it is always kind of sad when um, another physical bookstore location goes out so hopefully we'll be able to gather in a few more customers have some regulars uh, make this even a, you know a bigger place for people to gather if you used to go to Barnes & Noble frequently, come check out Anderson's Bookstore, a great local alternative. Didn't you just love that last segment? Personally, I love books. Now moving over to our own Mustang Athletic Department, let's see how our dance team is doing and see how their season's going. The bus was late. The bus was late. And it didn't really affect and, us, but. But it kind of. My name is Jaden Guthrie. I am a senior and I'm on JV on uh, the Matia Valley Dance at Matia Valley High School. I'm actually a captain of the dance team and I just love the guidance that I'm able to have for the underclassmen that are in my, on my team and I love being able to be that figure for them. My name is Leah Green. I'm a senior on varsity. I love the adrenaline rush of performing, you know, face shows, energy. That's my favorite part about competition. And I also love spending time with my beautiful team, putting on our makeup, doing our hair. It's just a great bonding experience. It's like I hold a whole bunch of sisters. Man, I'm really craving some ice cream right now. Well, lucky for you, a new ice cream place just opened up in Fox Valley. Recently in Fox Valley Mall, La Catrina Michoacana opened on the second floor between Claire's and Auntie Anne's. Here's what the owner has to say about the new establishment. Fue un proyecto que hicimos de familia y tratar de superarnos mejor. Entonces, eso nos hizo abrir el negocio aquí. Que es un negocio de familia, que lo que hacemos aquí es para pues para que nos apoyen, para que nos conozcan también que es parte de, de, de México, que es a par, pues que hace algo que se vende también allá, que conozcan más. That's like a, it's like a weird like ice cream texture, but it's still really good. Like the flavors like um I don't like a eggnoggy like flavor. Okay, this is a strawberry ice cream. 
It's really good. I would give it like an 8 out of 10 <laughs> or maybe like a 7.5. The lote is so good. It's really good. The annual orchestra showcase is right around the corner. And the dancers have been practicing and preparing every week. And they give us a look into what they have in store. Matia Valley's Orcsis Dance Company has their end of season showcase this February 2nd and 3rd. Hi, I'm Dana Hernandez and I'm president of our Orcsis team here at Matia. Um, so basically we are a student-led dance program here, so not quite like dance team which competes. We're completely student-led, so students will audition a piece to be put in our show in February and then we'll get to learn it the entire year. We usually start in August. The company dancers have been practicing every week in preparation for the Fox Valley Showcase pep assemblies and final showcase. Um, Orcasis is a really amazing experience. We all get to collaborate and work together to put out a really amazing show. It's really fun getting to work with girls that you don't usually see throughout your day and kind of building those connections. Um, yeah, you just make some really great friends on Orcasis and it's super fun. It's really fun. Every year, members on Orcasis get to pick a non-member to participate in partner dance. We, we love it! Join this episode, do you want to be part of our award-winning program? Many people think that the main is a club, but it's not. Ask your counselors how you can join our class, media production, or stop by F219 for more info. Now, the elective fair just finished, so let's get a recap of what went down. Let's see what our students and teachers have to say about the elective fair and some of the courses at Matia Valley High School. Um, I think the electives fair is a great opportunity for students to explore all the options out there. Like I think we have something like over 130 different electives and students might not have heard of all of them and it's a great chance for them to see classes that will be interesting or creative or aligned to maybe a future career interest so they can find out here in high school what they're interested in doing in their future. I really recommend all of our journalism classes. So broadcast journalism, yearbook journalism, and newspaper journalism. Those are all classes where students can be creative and they can get their voice out there and they can do something that is real and student run. Uh, my favorite station was the engineering station. I think they do a good job of uh, getting kids interested in their programs because they have a lot of a variety of objects they could show you, like physical fruits of their labor, so to say. I think it's interesting what they have there. Denton, when Alpha do have a monocle? No, he doesn't. I swear he did. All right, then let's see if our fellow Mustangs can beat the Mandela effect. My name is Kari, and I'm a sophomore. My name is Esther, and I'm also a sophomore. The second one. <laughs> right. It's left? the first one. No, it's the first. Yeah, yeah, the left. Oh. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, shoot. I don't use PayPal. Man, I don't use PayPal. The, the top one. Top the, one. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. It's the bottom one. No, no, no. Um, bottom. 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 I'm literally wearing. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell that it was a top one. It was, it was a top? It was a top one? Wait! Look, it's right there. No, you're joking. Hold on, let me, let me see that again. Y'all both got it wrong. Join us as we watch this segment about how First Student and their recent developments helps us with your safe ride to school, to and back, for a majority of students. A few years removed from when the COVID pandemic brought the school bus industry to a screeching halt, its consequences are still being felt through a shortage of drivers. Working closely together, the bus company, for a student, District 204, and Matia administrators have aimed to minimize the impacts. Yet still, it remains an inconvenience for students and drivers alike. I sat down with self-proclaimed twins, Spirit House Dean Matt Walpole, and Principal Dan DeBrucker to try and find out why this issue still lingers. So since the pandemic was, has kind of created this bus driver shortage, we all have reevaluated how we want to operate in life. 
what we want to do uh, for a living. How do we want to make money? How do we want to spend our time? A lot of people were able to shut down um, and spend time with the family, and so their people's priorities changed. So going back to work was not a priority for a lot of people. So the bus driver shortage is similar to the shortage in a lot of different areas. Still, the district and administration are working hard aiming to attract more drivers and keep those that may be the next to leave. But I think our district's done a pretty good job with raising the pay and doing some recruiting um, uh, runs and, and trying to communicate out that we're going to offer different things um, and, and bonuses. I mean, they've tried a lot of different things to try to fully staff on a consistent basis. At the end of the day, DeBrucker and the staff are gracious for student flexibility and tolerance with the tumultuous schedule changes that can come. And we're surviving through it every single day and I mean, a pretty good success rate and kids are getting home safely so we're excited about it. Uh, we just ask for some grace, ask for patience and they've been awesome. When you get out there and your bus isn't there, just assume that their staff is there to help you and uh, we'll get you home safely. It sometimes just may take a little bit longer than we want. Though the issue is far from solved, both sides are working hard to limit the inconveniences students experience, keeping what is an unfortunate situation from taking a disastrous turn. This is Charlie Davidson with The Main. Thank you for watching this episode of The Main. If you want to see more of our content, make sure to head over to our YouTube and subscribe. And if you just can't get enough, check out our Instagram page at Matia Main. From all of us here at Broadcast Journalism and Productions, stay amazing. Stay amazing.